Hello viewers, welcome back. In this video, I'll go over my setup. Whatever the setup I have is kind of tucked behind my TV. It looks like this. I know it's messy, that's why I kind of tucked behind my TV. Let me go over the components I have. First one is for lights control. I'm not using expensive Wi-Fi plug points. Instead, I'm using uh, 433 MHz RF plug points. You can find them on Amazon. They looks like this. And they're kind of six bucks per plug point. <coughs> These plug points I connected all, all over my house to control various lights, fans. Basically, you can connect any electrical appliance and which can be controlled. <coughs> Next one is Raspberry Pi. This is kind of central to my home automation system. I have my control program, servers running on it. And also I have one Kodi Media Center running on it, which is which I'm using to control streaming services like YouTube, Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, or to control my personal videos, photos. And, and also the Raspberry Pi connected to my uh, uh, speaker system, which I'm using to control my music. And I have one uh, USB hard drive connected to it, on which I'm storing my personal videos or photos. And this Raspberry Pi connected to a breadboard, on which I have one 433MHz RF transmitter, which I'm using to control my RF plug points. And uh, from the breadboard, I also have an IR transmitter connected to it, which is kind of sticking out of my TV, which I'm using to send IR ports to control my TV. And also I have an HDMI switch, which is connected to my Raspberry Pi, my Chromecast, Fire TV stick, and I also have one Windows machine, which is connected to this HDMI switch. And again, this HDMI switch is controlled to throw the IR transmitter by sending various IR ports. Uh, the next one is uh, my Kangaroo's mobile desktop. This is my Windows, I'm running Windows 10 on it, and which is connected to one uh, Logitech uh, webcam. This I'm using to, uh, this system I I'm using for Skype calling, which is again I have one control program running and which can be controlled through Raspberry Pi. And uh, next one I have is one Obitox phone adapter, which is connected to my landline and and it is connected to my Google Voice account. Again, this is also controlled through Raspberry Pi. So that's pretty much is my setup. So to control this setup, I already have uh, my web application running on my Raspberry Pi and which can be controlled through mobile or desktop. But I was looking for a more intuitive way of controlling these things. Uh, so voice is next best thing, right? So while you're having a food or even though your hands are full, you can control this thing through your voice. So initially I found some open source voice recognition softwares which I tried to run on my Raspberry Pi. But somehow I was not that satisfied with them because of the, uh, the lag and uh, uh, it was not that practical to use them. Then I heard about, heard about Amazon Echo. Then uh, initially I was a bit skeptical about its voice recognition and lag, but I wanted to give it a try and uh, it looks like more suitable for my need. Then once I got it, I initially tried their uh, out-of-the-box features. Uh, I should say that I, real, I was really impressed by the voice recognition they have. Whenever you say their keyword Alexa, it just wakes up and responds to your command. There was no lag or anything, it was very practical to use it. So. So I explore it further. So in next video, I'll introduce you guys to Amazon Echo. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.